to output all these products in the view. Currently, we are, of course, hard coding this. I will have to loop through them. However, I can't loop through all the products since I need to chunk them because I have several rows here. I don't have all the thumbnails in, in one bootstrap row. I got multiple rows because I want to have three items by default. If it's not collapsing on a smaller screen, I want to have three items in one row. Therefore, I need a way to loop through chunks of these items to actually, well, be able to output what I want to output here. Thankfully, Laravel makes this real easy. The first step is to start at the place where we load this view, so in the routes file. I will no longer just return the view here, I will add a controller to this whole application. So I will create a new controller file here, can get rid of this auth folder by the way. And now we'll use a different approach than I did in my past videos. I already showed how you would create a PHP file and basically set it up like this file here. Another way is to use the artisan command line tool to run php artisan make controller. And you're supplying a name sounds right. So this will be the product controller. If I now have a look at my controllers file, I got this product controller here. And this is just a quick way to create an empty controller with the import imports like the request object, which you will often need already in place. So in here, I will create a new controller action, a method in this controller, which I will call get index. And in this function, I want to return the view, the same method I was using here in the routes file. And this will use this controller or allows me to use this controller. To actually use it, I will go back to the routes file and replace this closure here with an array to configure this route or to configure what requests should do or what should happen with requests reaching this route. So I want to use a controller here, the product controller, of course, and here the get products, get index, excuse me, get index action. I will also give this route a name. We'll call it product index. And with that, all requests reaching that route will be redirected to this controller action here. Now in this action, I not only want to return view, though this would work, you can see it if I reload. I want to return the different products. So I will do this by creating a new variable called products. And then I will use the product model also imported here, use app product. This is the model we created in the last video. I will use this model and then the all method to simply fetch all the products. Next, I add an array to this view method here as a second argument to return not only the view, but also attach some data to this response or not to this response, but to this um, method call here where this view is rendered by Laravel's plate templating engine. I want to pass a variable named products and this name is up to you here. This will create a variable available in the view PHP file. And I will set this equal to the products variable up here. So this part, the string here will create, Laravel will create a new variable called products, which we can then use with dollar sign products in this view file, in this blade.php file. So to use it, I want to loop through all the products, but as I said, I kind of have to create some chunks to make sure that actually I have an outer loop with all the chunks. So for example, if I have five products, like it is the case here, and I only want to display three per line, I would have two chunks. The first chunk holding three products and the second chunk holding the remaining two products. So in order to do this, I will create a new for each loop and I will loop through products. As I said, this is possible because this dollar sign products refers to the variable I create here or I tell Laravel to create. For each products as product, almost as product chunk would be a more fitting name because I want to loop through chunks. However, this will loop through individual elements. Thankfully, 
Laravel offers a useful helper method here, which you can use on any collection. And this is a collection. Data you get from the database through Eloquent, Laravel's ORM, will be a collection unless you got it via the first method, which will return a single item. So this collection here has this chunk method, which we can use. And then I define the chunk size, three. I want three items in each chunk. And now this will no longer provide the individual items inside this loop, but instead chunks of items. So I will end this for each loop here. And inside this loop, I will copy one row one bootstrap row here, get rid of all the other HTML code below here and also get rid of two columns. I only need one. So now I will create this whole content here per chunk. However, I only want to create the rows per chunk because the columns should be on a per product basis. So inside of this row, I will create another for each loop where I will loop through these chunk items as products uh, because the items in this product chunk, of course, are the individual products just split up over multiple arrays chunks. Now I can also and I should access this loop and inside of this loop, I'll have my column. Now that this works can be seen because if I reload, we get five items. Now still we're not seeing the data. We see that because I didn't insert this yet, but by the fact that we got five nicely aligned items, we can see that this chunking process here works. Now to output the actual data, I'll start with the image. I use double curly braces to enter the Laravel expression here. And then I will simply use my product and output the image path because image path is the uh, is one of the fields I set up in this migration file image path here. And you can use these database fields like properties on the data we get back from the database on Laravel since we use again Laravel eloquent, which allows us this mapping from model with which we work in our application and database entry, which we have in the back end or in our database. So I can use this and I will just copy that and do the same for the title and for the description here. And of course for the price. Now I will leave the dollar sign because I don't have that included in my price. I just have a number. And with this, if I now reload, you can see that we get a different pictures and titles, short descriptions and texts. Now the thumbnails don't have equal sizes, but that's okay for me. And yeah, we, we, we did a lot here. We are seeing the data we have in the database. We're actually creating this data. We set up the database tables and now we're outputting it here. I'll be happy to greet you back in the next videos when we take the next steps. See you there. Bye.